Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have an incredible guest in person. We have Ted Carr, he's amazing. We're gonna talk about his huge evolution he has had over the years. And I find it so interesting that over the last 14 years, 99% of his calories have come from fruit. So he's been mainly fruit-based and specifically over the last year or so, I feel like he's had a huge transformation, body, mind, spirit, everything manifesting. The guy's making 40,000 a month. So this is gonna be a great talk about health, wellness, spirituality, manifesting. So let's get into it. And I just pranked Ted with this cockroach actually right here. I got pranked him. me good. Yeah. Pranked me good. I was surprising him with a durian, guys. It smells so bad. I was like, I'm surprised you didn't know it was in here. I smelled something bad, and I was like, it's probably Jill. Because, <laughs> like, it only smells bad when she's around here. And, yeah. I don't think I smell you guys. And I've noticed <laughs> since I've been eating clean, I feel like I don't, ha I have a different smell. Like, I don't smell bad, right? Like, you don't need deodorant as much and things like that. And if I eat cooked food, I do notice a difference because I had cooked food in Miami not long ago. And then right away, I was like, I smell different. So do you notice that too? Yeah, and I remember the first time I, I discovered there was a difference. I was at a farm and my f friend Chris was running the farm and he was yeah. dating this uh, fruitarian chick. And then she came over after a week and she hugged him and kissed a little bit. And then after she left, he turned to me. He's like, she's been eating cooked food. <laughs> I was Stop. like, how do you know? He's like, I can smell it on her. Yeah, you smell it. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you've had a huge transformation. So how are you currently eating? And then we'll talk about your background a bit, too. I know people are wondering. Yeah, so how I currently eat, there's typ I typically have, like, three types of days. One type of day is all fruit. Just whatever is good. Mangoes, papayas, bananas, dates, unlimited fruit all day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but actually, it's not all day long. I have two meals. It's, like, one big breakfast and then one big dinner. Yeah, fruit. yeah. Simple. Next type of day is all raw. So it's like fruit for breakfast or fruit for lunch, whatever. And then I'll have like a big salad in the evening. Yeah. Which is typically just greens and guacamole. Yeah. Guacamole is like the only salad dressing that I use. And then the other type of day is where I'll be uh, fruit breakfast, like big smoothie or something. And in the evening I'll have... I was just laughing because this cockroach is still here. Yeah. <laughs> and then in the evening I'll have uh, guacamole with some like quinoa or rice or something yeah i see the guacamole in your story sometimes you just dip like cucumbers in the yeah, guacamole right that's it. it's freaking like that's the thing like the simpler you eat the better you feel so simple that's the thing like that's I why i don't swear. like going to restaurants it's so complicated yeah i was i have a bunch of good food for us to eat after so yeah but um i was saying like i was so happy to discover this lifestyle at 33 it literally changed my life i think i don't even want to know where i was headed you guys if i didn't find this lifestyle there was blood in my stool i was so tired all these health problems and it's just crazy. I honestly would be scared to know where I am if I didn't find it. But you found the lifestyle so young. We were mm -hmm. saying that before. So I think you were 19. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you found it. Tell me what happened when you started eating only raw food. <clears throat> My gosh. So everything, everything, everything happened for the better. Uh, I first started this diet and lifestyle because I wanted to get rid of my acne. And that cleared up like right away after trying so many other things that didn't work. But then once the acting cleared up, I stayed on this path because I felt so good. I felt so good. Like I used to, I used to be very, I used to be an actual quite angry man, angry boy, I should yeah. say. Yeah. I was an angry boy, angry guy. And I would snap, I would tweak, I'd get really frustrated. Things would piss me off. And then when I got on a fruit, after like being on it for a couple months, like my personality was completely different. I was so peaceful, so calm, so zen, so chill. These weren't traits you could have given me like two months prior. Yeah. So it changed my personality. And so when your personality changes, everything changes. Like True. What I watched and listened to and people I hung out with, the clothes I wore, the hobbies I had. the Yeah, it's, everything changed. The habits. And I think some people are scared of that. They're scared to change because yeah. everyone around them like maybe drinks. That's how they socialize. They go for burgers. They go for beers. So they're scared for that. Like, do you have any advice for people out there? I get so many people come on the channel and they say, I want to do this, but my family doesn't eat this way or the people around me. Does everyone around you eat this way now? Or like, do you have advice for people just to like get across that it's worth it, even if the people around you aren't eating this way? When I first became vegetarian, I got made fun of a bit. Yeah. When I went vegan, I got made fun of a bit. When I went raw vegan, I got made fun of a bit. When I went fruitarian, it just, it was, 
I'd, I'd already like gone through those first three levels yeah. of getting like made fun of or people thinking it was awkward. So it was a gradual thing. But uh, I think a lot of people really care what others think. And then others just don't. Yeah, true. So if you're the type of person who doesn't care what other people think, you're probably going to find it a lot easier to transition. But if you yeah. really care what other people think, then I know a lot of people that they struggle the most in social situations. Yeah. But you, I think you just have to practice like standing out a bit and just being that oddball who just orders a salad when everyone else is ordering, you know, chicken tacos or whatever. Yeah. Know? And I think if you can just do this lifestyle for like a period of time and see how it feels to actually feel good, then you'll want to do it. Because I know for me, I used to really care what people think like a lot growing up big time, like a lot. And I don't care at all what people think with my lifestyle. Like this is number one for me. And I think it's because I know how good it feels, mm -hmm. right? So how are you feeling now? You're feeling great for, cause, so you're like 14 years into this lifestyle. You've yeah. had no meat or no dairy at all in the 14 years? No, when I, the, within my or first three years. Oh, you're a vegetarian, yeah. No, I was only vegetarian for a little bit, but I was vegan for three years. And then I decided, hey, let me try to have some raw fish. Mm -hmm raw dairy and raw eggs because I thought maybe if I just stay raw but I have some animal products I'll be even stronger yeah not the case at all mm -hmm. it was garbage like my di digestion system digestive system didn't like it um found no di I didn't feel any difference besides but poor digestion mm -hmm. so that was like a little like week experiment I did one week experiment so after that back on full vegan full fruitarian okay so why do you think when some people leave they're like oh, I feel so much better. It reset my brain. Like, why do you think that happens to some people? And how do you feel when that happens? Like, if that happens with one of your friends, are you supportive? Or do you feel like, I'm angry, I don't want to hang out with this person anymore? Initially, I was like, nah, I'm angry, and I don't want to hang out with them. It was never like that. But I'm always just like, uh, the power of placebo is so strong. Mm -hmm. So if, if, I, if, if, I, if I, like, if you, if you hang out with people right now who are like convinced that like eating peanuts is the best thing ever, there's like this hidden nutrient in peanuts that you can't get from anything else and you have to eat a peanut to get it. And you hang out with these people, you watch their YouTube videos, you're going to eventually get convinced that, hey, maybe I'm missing out on peanuts and I should eat more peanuts. So then you try a peanut and in your mind you're like, oh, wow, this peanut is like the best thing ever because you placeboed yourself into believing it. True. So yeah. I think you can placebo yourself into believing anything. Um, so I think that's a big reason why people say, oh, I eat this and I feel this way. True. And do you think you would ever go back? Like, do you ever think you'll eat animal products again? If there's a gun to my head, for sure. Or if I'm <laughs> stranded somewhere with no other food and I don't want to die, then for sure. Yeah. But other than that, I see no reason why I would. Yeah, you're definitely one person who comes to mind who I could never see leaving. Like, you know, ever. I, I don't, like, I, what, what reason would I have? Yeah. You know, like I said, that's, it's, if, if there's no other food around and it's either I'm going to die or I'm going to eat it, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. Or if I have a gun to my head and someone's like, eat it or I'll shoot you or eat it or I'll shoot your family. Okay, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. But those situations are never going to happen. So. No. And it doesn't even look like food anymore to me. Even like you see it and it's just like, it doesn't look appealing or attractive. Like once you start eating this way, you get like so drawn to like the colorful, beautiful foods. And then you see that and it's just like, why do I want to eat that? It's like that photography. I'm sure you've seen that, right? Where they have like the apple. Yeah, yeah. And it can, there's this photography out there, you guys. Curly I'm sure and, lots of you have seen it. photography. Yeah. And it yeah. like analyze it. You can see the vibe. Photographs the vibe, like the energy of the food. And you look at an apple and it's so electric and alive. And that's the way I feel. And we feel on this lifestyle. And then you look at the meat and it's not alive. So that's why I eat this way. Well, this, this way thing to feel too, good. I don't even call it meat. I always call it what it is and I either say like a body part of a dead animal yeah or a body part of a murder victim yeah you call it, call it by the reality I mean, it's true it's true they call it what it is yeah. call it, saying it's meat like disguises it a bit yeah it makes it more socially acceptable yeah like like who doesn't want a bit of meat on them you know like get some you get some meat on you right here you got yeah. some meat on your hair yeah <laughs> so a little bit of meat you know meat's yeah. actually like it's actually kind of like a nice word Get some meat on my arms. Yeah, and people think you can't but get like these muscles, right? Without meat, you've got mu you're looking good. Like you have had <laughs> one of the biggest transformations I've seen, especially over the last like how long? Like I would say year. I know you say like it's taken a few years, and you show it's reels taken like that. a few years. Yeah, but you look really good and you look really healthy. So what are your secrets? What do you think is the key to this lifestyle? Are you supplementing? Yeah, I supplement. 
but it's not the supplements that make the, the difference. I, I, and there's one supplement that could make the biggest difference. In fact, it's once I started taking this one supplement, that's when all these steroid accusations started coming. I know what it is. Tell us. Creatine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So creatine as a vegan, I think it helps a lot more than if you were to take creatine as a standard North American eater because when you eat standard North American, you're already getting a bit of creatine from your diet. Whereas when you eat a vegan or a raw vegan diet, you're really not getting much creatine at all. So I think creatine supplementation as a raw vegan fruitarian can help you a lot more mm -hmm. than if you're eating regular food. And it, it, what it does is it helps your body retain intracellular water. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> your muscles actually fill up with a bit more water, makes your muscles look bigger mm -hmm. as opposed to like making your skin puffy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do that at all. It just makes your muscles bigger. And when your muscles are a bit bigger and when you weigh a bit more, like if you, let's say you gain three to five pounds on creatine, well, you're not going to be able to push three to five pounds more weight, you know, so it makes yeah. you stronger. Yeah, it's working. It works. Yeah. But you have to take it consistently. And since I've been traveling the past few weeks, I haven't been taking consistently and I've already noticed like my, a little bit of shrinkage. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. You so look healthy. And you know, I think, I don't know, personally as a woman, like, I don't know, everybody's got to do what they want to do. And I like when guys have muscles, but not when it's like too gigantic. <laughs> like, so the steroid <laughs> comments, I know you've been getting a lot of those. Even we did a video together on Zoom uh -huh. on my channel. And people think, yeah, a lot of people think you're on steroids. A lot of people think a lot of things on the web. So does that bother you at all? How do you deal with those comments? And do you have any advice for somebody who maybe wants to get more active on social media, whether it be YouTube, Instagram, TikTok? And how to deal, because you've been on for a long time. Yeah. How to deal with the negativity and the hate. I feel like I've I've been on for a couple of years now, a year and a half, and I'm getting used to it now. But I remember you, com it can you, hurt. you messaging me a year ago. You're like, Ted, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not sure if I can cut up for this. I'm getting all this slack. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, Julie, let me do it on track. Keep it up. Yeah. No, because I didn't, you don't, I didn't grow up with that, right? Like, I'm really easygoing, nice mm -hmm. to get along with. Yeah. Like, I obviously grew up with some conflict with people, like, obviously I had some of it, but in my real life, like I feel so good and people are always like, what are you eating? Like, tell me what you do. Mm -hmm. So when I got on YouTube and then people are just like making videos or doing this, I was like, whoa, hold up. But now, now my Instagram's growing a lot and I'm getting a lot of comments. Like you need me, you need protein, where's yes. this constantly? So any advice for us people out here, how to deal with it? Yeah, it's a, uh, you have this, I guess three tips here for this. Number one, Ask yourself, what would Jay-Z or Beyonce do if someone's talking shit like that? Mm -hmm. They're not going to care. They're, they're fucking billionaires changing the world for the better, you know? Or whoever. You replace Jay-Z, Beyonce with Elon Musk or pick your favorite celebrity, favorite mm -hmm. successful person. Do they really care what the, the sheep are saying? No. Do they care what the trolls are saying? No, they don't care. And if they care, they care for a little bit, then they get over it really, really quickly. So just like embody your inner boss, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that tip. That's number one. Number two is understand that if you were that, if you were that troll, if you were that hater, if you were that person, you'd be saying the same thing to you. Mm -hmm. So if you were them, you'd be saying the same thing. That perspective alone, I think, is really helpful. Mm -hmm. It makes you have some empathy for them. Compassion. Like, oh, poor person. Like, I now know what that would be like to mm -hmm. be in their shoes saying that, saying that same thing. Um, and then another one is... Just understanding that a lion never loses sleep over the opinion of a sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's helpful too. That I like. I like that little phrase. Um, and it ultimately it helps the algorithm. Yeah, true. It does help the algorithm. I've been thinking that too. It does I used help to the sometimes algorithm. like now that my Instagram's growing more. Sometimes I was just deleting mean comments because I was like, I don't want this vibe on here. But now I'm just leaving them because I'm like, thanks. This is you don't agree with my lifestyle, and that's okay. Or maybe you're mean, that's okay. But it's helping the algorithm, yep. and then it's getting more views. Yeah. Yeah. No, those are great tips. I like those, and those tips helped me when I was starting to grow. And I encourage you guys if you're thinking out there of getting started on social media, it's just been the best thing I've ever done. I feel like I'm really in my purpose now, and it was really hard times that led me to this. So I really encourage you guys not care what people think, just get started. And I feel like the more you do it, just the better you get. Don't you think? Yes, it, it, it tests you too. Like I, I've spoken with a few people and they've said, it's typically women who say this, but they're like, oh, my husband isn't supporting me in this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, your husband's testing you. He's testing you to see how badly you really want it. Yeah. Like, oh, Jillian, you say you want to be raw vegan? Well, get this. You're going to be deficient on raw vegan. Yeah. 
<laughs> you're not going to get a college of vegan. You're going to be deficient of vegan. And every time he says that, every time he like spits venom or whatever, or like doubts you, he's testing you. How badly do you really want it? True. It's true. And, and, it, and yeah. if you're going to be like, oh, my husband doesn't support me. I'm out. I'm not, I can't do the diet. Okay, well, then you don't deserve it. Like, you're, you're not strong enough. Yeah. But if you can make it through the, the fire, come with the other end, you'll be so steadfast. Be like, no, nope, this is 100% it. I've made, th- made it through all this doubt in my family, made it through all this doubt from my husband or whatever. And you come with the other end, you're so confident. Yeah, it's so true. And it changes you. That's what I love. You become so confident. And, 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 and when, when someone, someone casts doubt at you, in your head, you already know all the rebuttals. Yeah. You know, so yeah. like you can, you're proving it to yourself the more someone doubts you. So true. And it's not even like when you create content, it's not even what you're doing. I feel like I heard this, I think, on Think Media. I love him. It's like who you're becoming. Like mm-hmm. you really do become a very strong person, like who you're meant to be. You really, it really changes you. That's yeah. the thing I love the best about it. I think I've created like 250 YouTube videos and I'm such a different person from like the first video to now. And that's one of my favorite parts about cool. it. And what it, it made me think what you were saying about like the women and divorce and the support or whatever. Because somebody was messaging me last night being like, Jill, I want to leave my marriage and I'm not happy, but he supports me. And I think there's a lot of women out there who feel that, that way. And, you know, after I had my baby for a few years, my husband was totally supporting me. I did real estate, but then I kind of stopped when we had the baby. And it's just I was totally, totally depending on him. Right. And then when we split up and then over the years, just having to, like, support myself sometimes it did make me angry like he's not supporting me but then it led me into my purpose Mm -hmm. and now i'm supporting myself amazing like things are going amazing so just i encourage anybody out there like maybe the bad times are blessings that lead you to your purpose and lead you to be able to support yourself and to live the life you didn't even imagine it with independence right Yeah. yeah yeah well there's so many things we can talk about i want to talk about manifesting too because speaking of independence money and everything You've manifested quite a life since back in the day, right? When you got on the scene, you're in your 20s. Now you're in your early 30s and you're making like, I think you're pretty open about it. Yeah. If you don't want to share this, I will cut it out. But I think you're making like 40,000 a month. So this is inspiring to a lot of people because content creation and the online world is a huge thing now. I feel like it's like either you're making money online in the online world or in the real life. And so I think you're doing this mostly online and a lot of people want to do that. So how did you manifest 40,000 a month? Yeah, this, this past month, uh was the best because it was my first time ever like traveling for a month not even working much on my phone or laptop at all and we did one of our biggest months organically no ads we did over 50 grand wow and i didn't do much at all that's amazing like like maybe like half hour to an hour a day thank you (laughs) that's good uh so it's it, it's so crazy to hear like myself say that out loud because yeah. I was just talking to a friend today and he's talking about his friend just got a job and he's making sixty grand a year and his friend's happy he's like a sixty grand a year job and I'm thinking I'm like shit someone can make that in a month yeah it's crazy nowadays and I but, feel like but, it's a lot easier than people think yeah I've got, but I've got, but here's the crazy part too so I've got clients now who are making three to four hundred grand a month. So when you say, oh, Ted, you're making yeah. 40 grand a month. I'm like, okay, well, times that by a year, that's like 400 grand a year. Wow. Right. She's doing that a month. And I, I was speaking to the team member just yesterday and he's like, yeah, we had a bit of a low month this month. I'm like, what'd you guys do? It's like 300. Wow. 300 grand. Is that's a low amazing. Month. And they're, 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 they're upset though. Yeah. They're like, what's wrong with the business? We're only doing 300 this month. Yeah. They want to get back to 400. So it's like, it's all relative, right? Um, so for a lot of people who hear 40 grand, if I put myself in their shoes, you know, f- three, four, five years ago, so that's the most unrealistic shit I've ever heard. 40 grand in a month is, is not realistic. Mm-hmm. Highly unrealistic. In fact, most people I talk to when I ask them what their monthly income goal is, do you know what they say? What? Get, take a guess. What's, I'm going to guess. What's people's what are you average to most people? Well, I'm going to guess they say five to 10 grand a month. Yeah, but most people don't believe 10 grand is possible, so they normally go between 25 and 5 grand. Wow. Yeah. That's, their, that's their goal. And thinking about that is completely unrealistic. And I understand why, because most people don't have something amazing to sell. Mm-hmm. They don't have people to sell it to, and they don't have a way to sell it. Mm-hmm. And they hate sales. Mm-hmm. They hate sales. They and a lot of them don't want to be like salesy. They yep. don't want to be online. They don't want to be, be salesy. Like- but the, here's the craziest part, though. I just did 50 grand and I did no sales. And I, I teach, and I teach people how to 
uh, hit 510k a month without needing to sell mm -hmm. by just giving away free stuff. Like you're giving away a ton of free stuff. Yeah. You can make so much money just by giving away free stuff. I just like thinking like, how can I add value? You know, that's what I was well, saying. That's, that's, that's where the free stuff comes in. Just yeah. free, 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 free. And if you are going to like sell something, give away a free trial. Yeah. Say so here's a free 14 day trial. Only after the 14 days, if you really like it, then you can pay a whopping 50 bucks a month or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like you can just give away free trials. Mm -hmm. um, so, and this is when I, when I, I first got one of my first jobs at a gym and when I first got the job, they had me go out around the city handing out flyers, handing out free trial flyers. And I was so happy handing out these free trials to people. I'm like, here, free gym, free gym, free gym. It felt so good. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize back then that I was getting this gym so many clients that would eventually start paying monthly. Mm -hmm. Didn't feel like sales to me though. Yeah. It's like free trial, free trial, free trial. Take the, go for it. Enjoy the gym. Yeah. Well, if somebody is feeling like a lot of us have like limiting beliefs with money, right? And bad feelings with money. Maybe somebody doesn't want to look in their bank account because yep. they're like, oh, I've been spending too much mm -hmm. or like don't want to check the mail because the bills or have like blocks up with the money. Can people still make that kind of money with those blocks up or do they have to do some inner work really to or do you think they can just get to work, follow their passions, start working? No, and even if they a, have those blocks up, the money will come anyway. That's a really interesting point. That's a really interesting point. I don't even, I don't even know if I'd call it a block. I'd call it more of like a... Resistance? Like, no? It's like an association, associated trigger. Like, so for me, for example, one, one of my biggest fears for the longest time was every time I opened my inbox, my fear was, okay, I'm going to open my inbox and I'm scared to see a refund request. Yeah, that makes sense. What, from one of the clients? From yeah. The, yeah, yeah. And huh. so... I also experience, like you said earlier, like when I open my banking app on my phone, that I'm gonna see like minus whatever. Mm -hmm. And when I go to the store now to buy stuff on my grocery, grocery with a credit card, still to this day, because I've had this happen in the past, I'm, I'm afraid it's gonna decline, so I'm gonna <laughs> money. I've been there too. So it's like, even though I have these associated triggers or whatever you wanna call them, I still make money. You know, they're just, it's just there and like this like stored trauma or something, you know? Yeah. It's still there, but I can still make money anyway. Yeah. And so I have definitely haven't like worked through those blocks, if you will, or whatever, those triggers. And I'm st I haven't worked through them at all, but I'm still able to, 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 to make stuff happen. And it's because the majority of the time I feel rich. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. That's I the feel key. rich majority yeah. of the time. I forget what I was watching yesterday. I was watching something. Maybe it was, okay, I think it was Elmer Locker uh, Jr. It's one of my favorite manifesting channels. I'll link it down below. And it just really resonated with me because he said, whatever you want, like if you want to live an abundant life, I think it was that, unless it was Lewis House, you have to like, everybody knows this anyway probably, but you have to like feel that. So if you want to li live a certain lifestyle and be really abundant, how would you feel when you're walking to the store? How would you feel when you're working? How would you feel when you're here, when you're there? And just embody those feelings, become that, and then you attract that. Do you think that's really true? Just look at the opposite. Let's say I want to um, attract a soulmate. Mm -hmm. Okay, instead of feeling like I have a soulmate now, let's look at the opposite. Let's say I act like I'm a loser and nobody wants me. Mm -hmm. What are the odds of me attracting a soulmate? True. If I feel like a loser, nobody wants me. Very low. Like or let's say I have a fight coming up. I'm a boxer. I'm going to the fight. Let's look at the opposite of, of feeling like a winner. I'm going to go into this fight feeling like a loser and I'm going to lose. What? Like, and I, I go in there very unconfident. I go in there feeling very scared, very timid. I go in there feeling like, oh, there's no chance I'm, I'm screwed. Yeah. What are the chances of me winning? Mm -hmm. Like none. So... When you say, is it true that if you feel abundant, you'll attract abundance? Well, all you have to do to prove it to yourself is look at the opposite. It's right? true. Like, if, you want to, if you want to get rich, what would happen if you felt poor all the time? Mm -hmm. Oof. You didn't want to go there. True. Or, it's like, you are the, or even a simpler example, let's say you want to have a very happy life, mm -hmm. full of joy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's look at the opposite then. So your desire is joy and happiness. But Jillian, I want you to go around feeling sad and miserable all the time. Mm-hmm. No. How is it possible to it's have a not. joyful, happy life? It's impossible because your feelings will attract all you, that you experience. So what are some tips maybe for somebody if they're, I think I've asked you this before, but I like this question. If somebody's feeling that their life isn't what they want and they're not feeling happy, how can they get from that to where they want to be? 
Yeah, there's there's a few there's a few steps, if you will. And the first step is getting clear on what you want. However, this is very difficult for a lot of people because I've asked the audience many times, what do you want? Tell me what you want. And they say, I don't know. So I, this boggled my mind for a while because I've been so clear on what I want for years, but I understand now that most people are actually not clear on what they want. Mm -hmm. So how do you get clear on what you want? Mm -hmm. It's actually very simple. You write a list of all the things you don't want. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be fat. I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to be sick. Really? You think place we to start. should make a list about the don'ts? hundred percent because now watch. Then you know what you want. Yeah. You, you, then you write the opposite. What's the opposite of sick? Healthy. Yeah. What's the opposite of rich? Or sorry, what's the opposite of broke? Rich. Then you write the opposite and then you delete the list of things that you don't want and you just obsess over the list of what you do want and you act that way now. You feel that way now. Yeah. So that's step one. Or actually, I kind of skipped a step two already. But step one is just identifying what you do want. And you do that by identifying what you don't want and fi finding the opposites. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Yeah. And, and, and um, to your point of saying, you're like, really, do you think we should make a list of the things we don't want? What kind of car do you have? A Range Rover. Okay. I'm proud of myself. I've been doing well lately, so I bought that like last summer. That was my dream car. Amazing. Yeah, Congrats. it's always been my dream car. Okay, so when let's say you're driving the Range Rover, would you appreciate it if on the dashboard, when you're low on oil, it alerts you saying low on oil? Yeah. Would you appreciate it if you were low on gas and it said low on gas? Yeah. But it's telling you what you don't want. You don't want to be low on gas. True. You don't want to be low on oil. Yeah, I like you. that. That's good. So, but here's what you do. You're smart enough to be like, okay, look, I'm low on oil, so I'm going to go find oil. And you obsess about finding oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm low on gas. Where's the gas station? And you put single-minded focus on the gas station, gas station, gas station, gas station, gas station. Mm -hmm. When I'm driving my Tesla and it's low on battery, I'm like, where's the charger? Supercharger, supercharger, supercharger. I'm obsessed with finding the supercharger. Mm -hmm. I don't go, oh my God, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1% of battery. Yeah. And you don't go, oh my God, whoa, 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 right? So it's just, you get clear what you don't want and then boom, you flip it to the opposite. What do I do want? And you obsess on that. Then the next step is to feel like you already have it. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I find myself doing, I, I've observed this of myself, it's kind of interesting. If, I'm, if I need to uh, cut something in that kitchen, like let's say some paper or whatever, I walk around the kitchen like this, like with my fingers like this. Really? Yeah, because to like get in the feeling of holding scissors. Yeah. And then I find the scissors so much quicker. <laughs> I never thought about that. That's a good point. Yeah, or, or, or if I'm looking for a key, I go, I go like this. Where's the key? Where's the key? Where's the key? <laughs> I, I like just it. get in the feeling of, of this. Of, no, this is good. I lost something the other day and I was like, God, please help me find it. And then I found it right away. But I like this. Mm. I'm going to do this next time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's the second step is just feel like it's it's already here now yeah and then the third is just to persist yeah and believe it can happen persist. i think a lot of people maybe things happen well, and they get discouraged and then they give up and it's so sad persistence comes when the belief is there yeah persistence is another word for belief because you wouldn't persist if you didn't believe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you got to persist and most people screw this part up and and you know what's interesting about this part is let's say we want the room in this uh, the temperature in this room to be i don't know let's say 19 or mm -hmm. 20. Mm -hmm something comfortable okay so if you get up right now and you go change it to 20 mm -hmm. and then I get up and I go change it to 30 the fact that you made it 20 is moot now yeah yeah it's t I totally screwed your your set yeah, point yeah but if you then get up after I change it to 30 and change it back to 20 mm -hmm. Back, you change it back to 20 and I forget to change it back to 30 and I just let you, okay, Julie, mm -hmm. you win, keep mm -hmm. it at 20. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Yeah. The room will now get to 20 mm -hmm. because it's set and it stayed set. So people say you can achieve whatever you set your mind to. Mm -hmm. I disagree. I say you can achieve whatever you keep your mind set to. True. That's what's key. That's what's so important. You got to keep it set. It's like training. It's like the gym. You got to train your mind constantly, right? Like almost like the working out at the gym, eh? And yeah. get yourself out of those bad thoughts when they come. Keep it and set. Like it, it needs to become a totally habitual way of, of being. Yeah. Where do you think you're headed? I mean, you're doing really good right now. Like what is your goal to be making per month? Within the next decade, within the next decade, I'd like to be worth a billion. Yeah. Oh yeah, you have that in your profile, future billionaire. I like that. Yeah, it's in the next decade, a billion. Well, but that would mean like my company would be need to be doing like ten to twenty million, and then mm -hmm. I'd be worth a percentage of that. So, mm -hmm. long term, I don't see why not. Because I wanted to be a millionaire when it was so unbelievably unrealistic. Mm -hmm. I had nothing except the desire to be rich. Mm -hmm. Nothing. 
going for me. I was a complete nobody with nothing. And I put it out there saying I want to make a million bucks, want to be, want to be a millionaire, all because I learned about law of attraction. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if the law of attraction is really legit, then let's go crazy and just say a million. Yeah. Lo and behold, a million bucks. So now that I've hit that, I'm like, okay, let's say a billion. Yeah. Why yeah, not? Exactly. Why not? Is there any crazy story that comes to mind of something you've manifested where you deliberately use the law of attraction? So many things. Yeah. So many things. It's, uh, I don't know, like, just like pick a category of life and it's like I've probably manifested something deliberately in that. And it's, it's it, the moment that it happens. It's like, oh, sometimes, sometimes yeah. you realize it in the moment. You're like, oh my God, this was like the thing I visualized. And other times it's like in high afterwards you look back and you're like, oh yeah, I wanted that thing and now I have it. Mm-hmm. Um, so many things like pretty much everything I've put. A, okay. I made a mind movie. Do you know what a mind movie is? No. You know what a vision board is, right? Yeah. So a mind movie is basically a slideshow, a video slideshow with pictures and video clips and text and music on it. Mm-hmm. That you watch mm-hmm. make like three to five minute video. You just watch cool. it every day. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. So I put all the most unrealistic shit on there. Like I'm living in the tropics. I'm making money online. I, I have a girlfriend. I have this. I have all these things, things I didn't have at the time. Mm-hmm. Everything on there was so unrealistic, but I put it on there anyway because I learned about the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. Three, four years later, every single thing on that mind movie is completed. Wow, in fact, crazy. E- even the bike that I put on there, it's like this professional $10,000 bike. Uh, I ended up getting the exact same bike. Wow, crazy. Like just uh, everything on there came true. And so hmm. for, if someone's watching this right now and they're wondering like, oh, what's like the, what's, what's, one, of the, what's one of the best techniques I can use to manifest my, my dreams? Make a mind movie and watch it every day. Yeah, I have to get back into doing that. And the vi- that or the vision board. Vision board is good too, right? Vision, so board's, is- vision board, the thing I don't like about it is that it's static mm-hmm. and it's just like a picture of a bunch of pictures. Yeah, But true. a mind movie... It's like it's got, it's got music. It, 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 it could pump you up. Yeah. You can add like all different effects and uh, the video clips and the, the pictures. You can. I recommend my movie over. Vision yeah, for sure. Well, I watch the Money Buys Happiness podcast. It's one of my favorite podcasts. So I know they always ask and I want to ask you, do you think money buys happiness? Let's put it this way. Uh, I just got back from traveling Spain. One of the best trips of my life could arguably one, the best trip of my life so far. Mm-hmm. So good. Had the time of my life. I could not have gone and experienced that if I didn't have the money to. Yeah. The trip cost freedom. me quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Flights, Airbnbs, the travel, the rental car, all this stuff. Food. So. It allowed me to pay for something that was an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and the car I have, I love my car. I love my home. I love my clothes and it all costs money. Mm -hmm. So does it buy happiness? Well, it depends on what makes you happy, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But this idea of, I don't know where this idea came from of people saying like money doesn't equal happiness because Money is simply a tool. It's a medium of exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a medium of exchange. That's all it is. And so saying money doesn't equal happiness is like saying backflips don't equal mangoes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What do they have to do with each other? True. One is a backflip and one is a calorie source. (laughs) Why does a medium of exchange equal an emotion? (laughs) Yeah. Right? So you could say you could say backflips don't equal happiness. Yeah. But you never do. When someone does a backflip, you say, dude, that was sick. Congrats. Yeah. Or that was amazing. Way to go. You never say, yeah, I know you can backflip, but it doesn't equal happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got this brown dress, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't equal happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you you filming a podcast? This doesn't equal happiness. Mm -hmm. Nobody says that. We're so trained (laughs) to be like, oh, you have money. Oh, yeah, but this doesn't make you happy. Yeah. My, my, My mom does that when she sees. Someone's super rich or whatever. And she's like, yeah, but he's not happy. Like, what does that have to do with him being rich? Yeah. No, nothing. You know what? I feel like a lot of the wealthiest, richest people I've met are just some of the happiest, nicest, like. Can be. 
I used to go to the plaza all the time in New York. My friend works for Fairmont, so she gets me a big discount there. Thank you, Kara, which is amazing. It's my favorite hotel in the world, and it's really expensive. It's like, I think right now the base price is 1200 US a night for a room. Whoa. It's crazy expensive. But I'll, I'll tell you, like, it's always full there, and I've never met the nicest, it's the nicest vibe, the friendliest people ever, the nicest people. So I, I don't agree with that when people say, like, people are jerks if they're rich and stuff. I don't agree with that. I think, I think money's great. It gives you the freedom to do what you want to do. Anyone who disagrees would also pick up a thousand bucks if you put it down right in front of them. Mm hmm yeah they and would money, also pick up what... they would also pick up ten thousand if you put it out in front of them yeah they would also cash a check if you gave them to them for a million dollars mm -hmm. anyone who says they'd like blah, 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 they would take it in a heartbeat yeah and if they wouldn't take it they would be very resistant to you taking their money mm -hmm. so they want it mm -hmm. because it's a tool it's a medium of exchange we can do so much with it we can we can we can donate to animal sanctuaries we can buy our mom a, her dream car we can buy our dad this and that we can buy trips to toronto to see jill mm -hmm. we yeah can do exactly stuff. yeah for me i love it because i love investing back in the content that's and making fun videos too videos that add value and just like that's just like my heart and passion do you feel like that's important too to give like yeah i guess you do like because you were just saying giving back to the giving back to things i think that's so important too it's so key so I love buying gifts. Yeah. Buying gifts is so fun. The fact that you bought me a durian, I appreciate that. Yeah, good. I'm glad. I just bought my buddy a few gifts this morning and I, he was so stoked. L little things. It's so nice. I love giving. Giving is way better than buying things for yourself. And this is just little. Like, I, I should have got you something even bigger. But no, how the heck no. do you even cut these, you guys? I don't know how to cut. Oh, do you cut it right there? I don't. Maybe this it's not is right. So is it funny. right? So funny. Yeah, I'll show you. So. Because, you know, Ted's traveling back to Vancouver on a plane in two days. And from what I've heard, be Durian gone. is banned this on will planes. This will be gone tonight. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So you picked a really good one. I'll tell you why. Two reasons why you picked a good one. One, three reasons. Number one, it's dank. It smells really, really, really good. <laughs> That's clue number one. Clue number two, it's got a fat, a long stem. It's very, very long stem. It's good. Oh, that's a tip for picking oh, a durian? Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. The third one, though, the, 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 the next to the good smell, it's the fact that it's cracked open. You see that it's already cracked open? Yeah, that's So you're crack asking, right how do you open it? That's what I thought Nature right when I saw that. Nature made it so obvious. It's like, here, we'll open it for you. And what happens is these are on a tree normally, way high up. And when it's ripe, what happens? It falls, yeah? yeah? When it lands on the ground, what do you think happens? Bam! It's open. Splits open. Yeah. But if you happen to pick it, like these people picked it, well... You just stick your thumb in there and look at that. Oh, wow. It opens without any effort. It's so, like, it's so sharp, this mm. fruit, eh? This so kills like 20 people oh. a year. Stop. 20 people a year. 20 people a year die from Guaranteed durian? Guaranteed 20 people. Stop. In, in the year 2023, 20 people will die from durian. In the year 2024, 20 people will die. Why, from being in the tropics and it falls on their head? Yep. Or how do they die from it? Falls really? On their head. Guaranteed 20 people will die, statistically speaking. I least. have never heard that. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. You know, I heard that so many people land in the hospital each year from avocado, from cutting an avocado with a knife. <laughs> no, it's true. We're laughing. We're like, ha, ha, but no, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Well, yeah, so you do this lifestyle in Canada. Yeah. I live in Toronto. I thrive on it in Toronto. I know a lot of people say, oh my gosh, it's cold. I always feel cold. So you live in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. It's not quite as cold, but it's still Canada. It's mm -hmm. still... So how does that work? Do you always feel cold, your body? Do you keep your house at 30 degrees or like? I walk around shirtless in the winter in my, in my house. And people are like, Ted, I thought you were in Canada. Why are you shirtless? I'm like, well, look at my thermostat. I just crank it. I do too. I crank it. Why not? People come in, they're like, Jill, you're crazy. No, I'm like, I like to not? feel like I'm in the tropics. Hell we are yeah. tropical creatures. 100%. And I'm not eating cooked food, so I'm not as warm inside. Like, yeah, yeah. But there's lots of tips and tricks. Like, you can use spices, cayenne pepper, well, the, stuff the, like the, that. Well, the most obvious one is, okay, you're cold. And where are you spending your time? In your house? Okay, make your house hotter. Yeah, like, what, what like, are we talking? Like, how high is the temperature in your house? Well, whatever's comfortable. I think mine's, I keep it set to like 23, 24. <laughs> Mine's even higher than that. I'm not even gonna say how high it is. What? Twenty six? Twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah, it's balling. <laughs> no. My family's like enough already. This is crazy. And yeah, so now it's That's yeah. awesome. Uh yeah. That's 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 what's up. That's, but I agree. So, yeah, you just make it warmer. There's lots of so you haven't found it an issue because I think that's a big thing people come on the, the channel. The temperature is not an issue based on what we just said. Just change the temperature. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like your thermostat's broken. If it is, fix it. 
That's, so that's number one. Temperature is not an issue. That's completely debunked. Worst case scenario, you're living in a house with someone who doesn't want to up the temperature, so you wear more clothes. Again, temperature debunked. The only real issue I find in Canada is the lack of consistent, really good, easy to obtain fruit. Yeah. And so I'm tempted this year to hire a fruit picking expert or a fruit shopping expert. Wow. So their job is every week, go <laughs> to all the best places, and source the best shit and bring it to me. This is so extra. Why not? I love it. I love it. That would be someone's what? dream job. You're going to put an ad on Kijiji or Craigslist or something? Be like looking for a fruit picker? Professional fruit picker. Oh, I, is there such I, a thing? I'm going to go with them the first time and teach them what's what. Yeah. Like, this is how I like it. This is how I like it. This is how I like it. Yeah. And then boom, there's your job. You know what? I got to say, like, I don't know how it is in Vancouver, but here in Toronto, we're pretty blessed. Like we get great. I have great access all year. But you know what to pick. Yeah. You, you, you know how to pick it. We have this so, market so called Ample someone. Market. Ample Market. Shout out. <laughs> Amp, even though they don't let you bring the little red cart to your car. That kind of makes me mad. I'm like, I'm going to bring it back. I'm not going to steal your car. You Just know? do it anyway. And then I'm like lugging Just all this stuff. Anyway. Do it anyway. They yeah. would send their, they have a security guard. Let they have a security you. guard at the door watching me with the red cart. They'll follow you. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this market is great. People always ask me, where do you go? They have, that's where I got the durian, the best quality stuff. Like, so to me, there's just, it's out there. It's out there. Cool. Like you can get it, you cool. know? Yeah. Well, any other tips for people to thrive on this lifestyle? Cause you're thriving, right? You're looking good. You're doing good. So what's this, any more secrets before we end off? Yeah. Don't obsess over the diet treat the diet like a tool and then go and do stuff like ask yourself why do you even want to be healthy right is it to be fit is it to be sexy is it to be whatever what is it to go like hiking or whatever is it to play with your grandkids or whatever it is you want to do and then just or is it to, maybe you want to grow a business mm -hmm. maybe you want to eat this way so you can grow a business okay now go and do that thing and just use the food as a tool in the same way you wouldn't obsess, hopefully you wouldn't obsess about money that you're earning and you're just stacking cash and looking at the cash stack up like you're, uh, who's that character in that movie, who, the cartoon character who stacks his cash up? Not the Grinch. Um, I don't know. The Scrooge. Yeah. Not Scrooge? I'm not a movie person. I think it's a Disney character. I don't character. think I've seen Scrooge? it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, whatever. He like obsesses <laughs> over his money, counts every penny. Yeah. That's a weird type of, it's like, it's like people say you have an eating disorder. You have an eating disorder if you obsess over your food. Yeah. You have like a money disorder if you count all your money, but if you just go and do stuff with the money, like you reinvest it and you like, you live your life and you don't let it, you don't let the food or money control you, whatever. Cool. Like you're doing something. So I, I think that's how you really thrive. You put, you put the food to the test. Um, and so for me, I like to test my performance. How am I, how am I in the gym? Mm -hmm. How am I when I'm playing basketball? I was playing basketball this morning, with my friend, I put food to the test. Um, and my business, like, how focused am I throughout the day? Mm -hmm. you know, if, if, uh, if, if you're not testing yourself mentally or physically with the diet, then how do you know how well the diet's working? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people say this, like, speaking of eating disorder, fortunately, I never had an eating disorder, which is great. I feel for people who people, have... People think you have one now, Joe. Yeah. No, people do. That's what I was going to tell you. Like, I'll... Some, there's some people out there who think this lifestyle is like an eating disorder because it's so restrictive. Like that's the kind of world we live in. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I eat more variety than 99% of the people on the planet. Mm -hmm. True. I eat as much as I want. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy every meal. I don't restrict myself at all. Um, and I can perform at a high, high level. So what, what, by what, do, I need to know their definition of an eating disorder, but I don't believe I would fall into any of the boxes. You couldn't really check any of the boxes of an eating disorder, considering what I. It's a good point with the variety. The variety is what really clicked with me when you said that because it is a huge variety when i used to eat the standard american diet it would just be like bagels pizza pasta bread like smoothie the same thing mm -hmm. now you're right it's like so much variety of fruits vegetables nuts and seeds but even if i eliminate that variety factor out of the discussion and let's say i just ate 
watermelons or oranges for a couple months, I still don't look at that as a disorder mm -hmm. because I'm really enjoying every watermelon. I'm enjoying my mm -hmm. orange as much as I can. I think disorders come from, I think a sign of a disorder is when you're like restricting yourself mm -hmm. or when you can't perform. Like if you can't, if you can't run a fast 5K or you can't do a certain amount of push-ups or pull-ups or you can't get stronger every week in your workouts or you can't go the whole day without having to take a nap or and get solid work done, like if your performance is declining, I think you have a disorder. Yeah, true. That's why I like this lifestyle because the energy is just like, you guys, I have so much energy all the time. That's why I eat this way because you... So with the gym, do you, I feel like I have the most energy in the gym if I eat like a huge plate of mangoes first, like a bunch of fruit. That's what gives me the most energy and people think that's crazy, like that won't give you the energy in the gym and that you need the meat and all this. So what gives you the most energy? Like say you're gonna go to the gym at noon, what would you eat in the morning for like maximum performance? I typically eat around noon. So I probably don't eat prior to the gym. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, really? I see all these people say that. I need some food before the gym. Yeah, women are a bit different, I think. Um, and if you don't train yourself to eat around noon, then you're going to be hungry before noon. Ghrelin is a hormone that gets released. You know what ghrelin is? No. Ghrelin is like the hunger hormone. Okay. And ghrelin will get released at the same time that you ate the day before. Wow. So if I eat today at 9 a.m., Guess when I'm going to be hungry tomorrow? What? I didn't know this. By 9 a.m. Yeah, that makes sense now. And wow. if I'm eating every day at 9 a.m., then that ghrelin hormone is so habitually getting triggered at 9 a.m. But if I eat around noon, what time do I get hungry tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Noon. Way to go. <laughs> you know, so, I used to hate in school when they would just ask you questions. <laughs> I hated that, like on the spot. Yeah, well, that's cool. I didn't so, know that fact. So, yeah. Um, so you can train yourself to just be hungry at a certain time. There's a guy on YouTube who, who did an experiment, and he's like, okay, I'm going to eat every other day for a month. Mm -hmm. He ate every other day. Guess when his ghrelin got released? Mm -hmm. Every other day? Every other day. Wow, cool. You're doing good, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, so, so what, what I would eat, but now that's just for like a little basic workout. But if I'm going to go for like a, if I'm going to run like a marathon or something or an ultra marathon or something, then yeah, I'm going to eat a bunch of mangoes or some papayas or yeah. some bananas or coconut water. Like I something. could just run for hours if I eat like fruit. And yeah. I'm just like, whoa. Like so when I did triathlon, I did uh, half Ironmans and full Ironmans. All I ate prior was the exact same thing I ate during, and it was the exact same thing I ate after the race, which was just coconut water blended with medjool dates. Wow. That was my breakfast, that was my race fuel, and that was my post-race Wow. fuel. Wow, interesting. Dates and coconut water. It's the ultimate. <laughs> Blended. Because you're getting all the electrolytes. Yeah. And you're getting all the glucose you need. There's nothing like coconut water. That's my favorite thing. It's so underrated. It's so easy, you guys. You just go to the store, buy the coconuts. If they don't have them, ask if they can order them in. You get a coconut opener off of Amazon. It's open. It's like the best thing for our body, I feel like. That's how I start my day lately. It's so good. Well, there's one other thing I want to talk about. I want to talk quick about sex relationships. As a raw vegan, <laughs> and I know you're open about this. You've made videos about the no-fap thing, too. Mm -hmm. And so how are things going? If you want to talk about this, if not, we'll cut it out. But how are relationships? Like, how is that world for you as a raw vegan? Some people think you lose your sex drive. I would just say, like, that's crazy. But how has that been for you? You should interview the, uh, interview the, uh, you should interview the, uh, how do I say this? Who? Interview some of the, um, people who know me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> See what well, they say. I can say anything on this side, but you got to ask them. Um, no, from my end, everything's everything's great. Everything's yeah. good. Um, it to me, like some guy. Every guy's different, right? Yeah. Every every woman's different in terms yeah. of like how much they want sex and what kind of sex they want, and you know, it, there's so many factors here. But uh, for me, like. I'm not like a lot of guys who can just like fuck anything that walks. Yeah, that's good. A lot of guys can fuck anything that walks. Yeah, I know. It seems like there's a lot of guys out there that are like that. Yeah, I am so picky. I'm, so, I'm picky to a fault. That's good, though. I'm picky to a fault. So then when I find 
someone who checks all my boxes and there's a lot of boxes <laughs> and they and they and they bypass all the red flags and there's a lot of red flags that I, I look for <laughs> um then the sex is amazing yeah and it's frequent and it's way better than being like drunk or on the standard I've, I've never had i've never had drunk sex or high sex i've never been under the influence it's all been so wow in your life in my life and i think i think every single girl wow. i've ever had sex with has been vegan no way wow i'm trying to think if there's an exception and you wouldn't date a non-vegan now right i can't see that i don't even need to ask Impossible. that question no <laughs> Well, okay, that was interesting. And okay, you've met a lot of vegans, a lot of raw vegans over the years. Is there anybody that comes to mind? Like the first person is this is the healthiest looking person. This person does it right. This person is like, wow. The healthiest looking? Yeah. Lou was epic. Oh, you met Lou in person? Yes, I'm time. going to interview him in California this yeah, summer. Yeah. So you guys subscribe for that. He's Shout a legend. He is 72. He looks 42. He's the healthiest person I know. You're right. I Lou's talked to him on there. the phone. Whoa. Lou. Um, and then his disciple, Dan. Yeah. Love Dan. Shout out Dan. Shout out Dan. Um, Everybody loves Dan. Even the, even the anti-vegans love Dan. <laughs> I'm serious. And then um, <laughs> Arnstein. Like yeah, Arnstein. I'm not that familiar with Arnstein. I know who he is. Like Legend. In New York, right? Yeah, Hawaii, New York, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those three, um, you look amazing. Thanks. You look amazing, too. I got to say, like, you look better in person. You, Ted <laughs> looks great on the internet, too, but you look better in person. Uh, and you're glowing. Things. Your skin's glowing. You look Thank really you. good, really alive and good vibes. Oh, that reminds me. Um, what's your name? Crystal. Do you know Crystal? No. Crystal Bonnet? Yeah, I know Crystal, the raw vegan recipe yeah, queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's local. She lives like half hour from me. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, she looks amazing. Yeah, she looks super healthy. Um, yeah, there's 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 a few. Um, those are just the first first few that come to mind. Yeah, cool. Were you sad when Elise left? Are you guys still friends or no? Yeah, we chat. Yeah, I like her. Yeah, she's dope. Yeah, she's really dope. Uh, was I sad when she left? I wasn't sad. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pick that emotion. I was at the time when she when she at the time when she went back to eating animals, just like with Yovana, I was opportunistic and I made videos about my reaction to them and I raked up like 20,000 views or something per video. So that would be like what I was when they went back to eating meat. I was opportunistic and I just made videos talking about I don't even know what I said in the video. I just reacted to it. But um, would you do that now if it was now? No, probably not. Like I wouldn't I can't ever see myself leaving this lifestyle. But say in a month I did. Would you get on YouTube and be like, Jillian, Jillian this, Jillian. Um, no, it's, ha it's hard to. S but that's how the YouTube world is anyway. I get it. Knowing you now that we've met and people this our relationship now being public, I probably would. Mm -hmm, It'd mm -hmm. be a great opportunity for me to get some views. You guys know Jill? <laughs> I'm not leaving think. though. You guys don't have to worry. I feel so great. Why would I do that? It would just be like, sometimes I think with Elise, imagine she just stayed and like worked well, this it is out. The like, thing, this is the thing with Elise. This is the thing with Elise. Um, and yeah, her and I were together for a little bit. So I got to like, I got to know her very well. Were you guys ever a couple or you guys were just friends? Yeah. yeah that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So what I found with Elise, and I'm sure this is the case with everyone else that goes back to eating animals, is... They had certain habits that were not the healthiest habits. Yeah. Like, for example, staying up too late or having inconsistent bedtimes, checking the phone first thing in the morning, um, things like this. Like, I know this might sound kind of minor, mm -hmm. but there's, there was a lot of low hanging fruit that they could have addressed that probably could have helped their health issues. Mm hmm before they started eating dead animals, mm -hmm. before they started eating murder victims. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. And I think I said this in the video. I said there were so many other things, so many other boxes they could have checked prior to resorting to consuming murder victims. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so, but I, I, th I, think, I, think that, I think though these people, Yovana, Elise, 
other people. That was crazy how it got Tim exposed even. with Giovanna. Yes, that was crazy. That was that, that was, was the fact that it was caught on camera. I don't camera, think there's unrealistic. been anything like that. Like nope. that That's was wild. Unbelievable. That's like the biggest like. But but the thing about these people is they are, they're experimenters. You know, they're yeah. they're like pioneers in, in a way. Like they're not afraid of trying shit. Yeah. So I give them kudos. I'm like, that's dope. Yeah. As 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 sad as it is that you're like, you know, contributing to the slaughter of animals and the torture of animals. I think it's cool that they're willing to try things and experiment with things. That's mm -hmm. how we push the human race forward, if you will. We try shit. Um, it's completely out of line ethically in terms of my viewing of it, but at least they're trying shit, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's, that's the cool thing about Elise and Yovana and Tim. They try yeah. it. Yeah, 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 I agree. And who knows, maybe if, maybe, who knows, maybe if they tried it, they felt way better um, they could help other people feel way better and then maybe we could find an ethical way to consume animals like I think there is an ethical way to consume animals and that is by consuming roadkill if there was a service that went around I just and think collected, that's so nasty yeah but they might it not, all is they though, might really not but, but think about yeah. this what if there was a service that went around so anytime there was roadkill it's kind of like um, you know the app Waze the what? there's an app called Waze no I don't know it it's like a map you know app you know Waze yeah so there's this app called the Waze you drive around and anytime there's like an accident or police stop, you just mark it down and yeah. everyone else gets notified. Hey, there's a police stop there. Hey, there's a speed radar gun here. If there was an app like that, but for roadkill, be like, oh, dead deer here, dead cow here, dead chicken here. <laughs> people just notify it. <laughs> then, then other people go around and pick up this roadkill. Yeah. That's yeah. completely ethical. I mean, yeah. So. But is there a period of time when it's dead? Like after... I don't know. I'm not an animal eating expert. I'm not an expert but either. But is there a period of time? Like, say a deer is dead on the side of the road. Is there a period of time before you, ha before you have to start, like, getting it ready to eat? Like, preparing you're it for... You're asking the wrong... You're asking yeah. The wrong. Comment down below. Yeah, comment down you know, below. We don't know. But point is, if there was fresh <laughs> roadkill, right? Yeah. Then people like Tim and Elise <laughs> and Ravana, or any other ex-vegan, whatever, they could now ethically consume their... Animal, well, not their animal products. Yeah, They're just animal products in general. Makes sense to do it like that, but I mean, I feel like the animals get at those animals, you know. Yeah, but we're animals. True. We drive. Yeah, we are animals. We can go beep alert. Yeah, and we're like the only animals. It's like I had Dr. Brooke Oldner on the channel recently, and she's like, humans and the animals that humans feed are the only ones that get these chronic diseases like cancer, diabetes, autoimmune conditions, and it's true, right? Say that again. So Dr. Brooke Goldner said humans and then also the animals that humans feed. So like oh, dogs yeah, and cats yeah, yeah. are the only ones that get chronic, major uh, chronic diseases and health problems. Interesting. I mean, think about it. Probably for the most part. Because of the foods we're eating. It's well, crazy. Well, like the stuff of, we eat. There are billions of creatures on the planet. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, that is. Billions of creatures, whether it's like an ant or a fly or a horse or a whatever, human. We're all different creatures. There's billions of us. And every single ant, every single creature in nature eats a raw food diet. Yeah, I know. Except us. But we're not in nature anymore. So every, <laughs> no, we're not. billions of animals, billions of, uh, yeah, billions of creatures, they all eat raw. And since we're not in nature anymore, do you think that's why we don't get the B12 naturally from a lot of the foods? Do you think it was like a soil thing and we're not out there and we're not, we're so hygienic now? And like, do you think that's you the theory? You can't use soap in nature. Yeah. When you and when you try and clean yourself with spring water or whatever river water, lake water, you're getting B12 in there. Yeah. And do you take B12? I can't remember. Yeah, it's periodically. Me too. I think it's important, but I mean, everybody's I take I take do. every supplement periodically. I don't obsess over like supplement stack. Um, Let me know what you guys take down below. Yeah. Well, I take a bunch of stuff on on occasion. Well, what's something we don't know about you? I have a rock and I will touch it. You have what? Rock and my elbow, touch it. Oh, oh no, wow. No, 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 right no, there? No, that's, that's my actual elbow. Higher. Right there? there? Yeah, move it. Move it around. Oh, wow. That's, that is, what is that? It's a rock. Oh. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, it, when I was young, I ran and I cut myself and a rock went in and I put a bandaid on it. No, wait, so it's really a rock there. It's a pebble, Let me yeah. see again. Wow, hey, that's move, crazy. Move it a lot. Squeeze wow. it, pinch it. Does it bug you? You don't, I guess you can't, you don't ever want to get it out? Tempted. Been there since I was like five. What do you think about when people have things in their bodies like root canal, breast implants, that sort of thing? I have one root canal from some dental work when I was 22 and I want to get it out, but it's not causing problems. But what do you think about when there's objects in the body? Do you think over time it's bad for us? I don't think this pebble is bad for me. I don't think the pebble's bad for you. But yeah. I mean when people get other things inside the body. 
It depends. Yeah. Depends. It depends. And also, you know, what's interesting is like, what do you consider inside the body? Well, I mean, if I was to get breast implants in the body or like having the root canal in your body or things inside your body that aren't naturally meant so, to be there. So, but like, would a piercing be considered in the body? Well, not really. We'll see then. True. Where is the definition of in yeah. the body? Because if I, if you put a rock in my hand and I close my hand, is the rock in my body? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess. I never thought about it like or that. Or if you, you know, if, you, if you're taking a poop, you now have poop in your body, mm-hmm. right? And poop is like bad. You shouldn't have poop. And now you're putting it in your body. Well, it's not in your body. It's like, yeah, it is in your body. You're not putting it in your body. It's coming out of your body. Yeah, okay. But no well, one says, oh, that's like, that's bad. You have poop and poop is really dirty and it's in your body. Okay, speaking of poop, sometimes... So, but you know what I mean though? Like what's considered in the body? True. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. So, do, true. but to answer your question about breast plants and plants, I think they're toxic and you should definitely not have them. You know what? I used to want them. Do you, like, have, you don't have implants? I don't have implants. <laughs> no, I have Victoria's Secret bras. Girls, if you're thinking about getting implants, don't do it. Girls, if you're thinking of getting lip injections, don't do it. Don't do anything to your body, please, for the love of God. Even like Botox, anything. I mean, I'm all for do whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 but from a personal preference, don't do it for me. Thanks. <laughs> and okay, one more thing. So speaking of the poop thing, people comment on my reels. They're like, oh my gosh, look what you eat in a day. You must go to the bathroom like so many times. But that's the one thing that's totally changed my life since being raw because I used to have major digestive issues before. So I go to the bathroom like one to three times a day. And that's what makes me happier too. Like things are moving. So my gut is not like backed up. So I feel happier because there's such a huge connection there. You go one to three times? I go one to three times a day. Did you feel, where do you go? And did you feel a difference with your digestive system being raw? I used to go once a week. That's crazy. I had a friend like that. I was just like, this is not good. But I thought it was very awesome. I thought it was super convenient. <laughs> I was like, I don't need to spend any time on the toilet except once a week. So I thought it was very great. I thought it was awesome. Uh, when I'm raw, 100% raw, I'm going five times a day average. Wow. When I eat cooked food, which is not much. It's like, think about this. Think what, think what I'm about to say is pretty crazy. When I'm 100% raw, I go five times a day. That's good. When I have a cup of quinoa or a cup of rice, which is approximately 600 calories of cooked food, yeah. the rest of my diet is completely raw, I now go three times a day. I'm surprised even three times a day with that, that you go with rice. With quinoa or rice? Wow. Yeah, either, any, any sort of cooked food. I go, it all of a sudden cuts down to three times a day. Well, raw is law. I feel the best on raw. You do too, right? Of course. Well, this has been amazing. I've loved having you on and I want to do a QA and a with you. So stay tuned because we're going to do a quick Q&A that's going to be posted after this video. So subscribe for that. Stay tuned for that. And is there anything else you want to end off with for my amazing viewers? I have the best viewers on YouTube. They're all so nice. You do. Your people love you. They're the best. No, people will come on for interviews and they'll go read the comments. They'll be like, Jill, you have the nicest viewers I've ever seen. The nicest community. And I love you guys. You are amazing. Yeah, I guess last thing I want to say is uh, thank you for having me. Thanks. Yeah, I've loved having you on. Thanks for coming on. Of course, anytime. Yeah, you're the best. And we'll do the Q&A next without the cockroach. And so stay tuned for that, you guys. (laughs) Love you guys. See you then. Bye.